I've been wandering around the show and I came across Lucid Motors. So I found someone to have a chat, chat with and I've come across David Lickfold. Hello. Hello. <laughs> good morning, how are you doing? Very good, very good. Can you tell me a little bit about sort of what, what your role is and then also we'll chat about what's going on today, but yeah. Sure, yeah, I'm, um, I'm fortunate enough to be Director of Chassis and Vehicle Dynamics Engineering mm. at Lucid Motors. So as a team, we do uh, ride handling, steering, braking, suspension, all those, all those bits, all the fun bits, as I like to think yeah, of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today, you've launched a new car. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, the, the car we're showing today, this is the Lucid Air Sapphire. Um, it's the first car in the new Sapphire brand within Lucid. So this is yeah. a, a performance variant of the Lucid Air. Uh, the Lucid Air, for those who don't know, is a all-electric sedan or, or saloon in, right. in UK speak, which is designed fully in-house in California, manufactured in, in Arizona. And yeah, this is the Sapphire. So this kind of steps it up a level in performance. And uh, yeah, this is the so first- So talk me through the base, like the base, I know there's a few variants of the base car. Yeah. And then how does this step it up from that? Yeah, sure. So we, we launched the Lucid Air with the Dream Edition, first of all. That was okay. kind of our, our launch edition. So limited numbers, we made, I think it was around 500 of those. Yeah. And they were, they were fully optioned. Every box was, was automatically ticked. And, and, and that car really is a, it's a blend of luxury and performance. Yeah. So it has fantastic range up to 520 miles uh, EPA rating um, on, on a single charge. And then we've got several different versions of Lucid Air as well. So there was the Dream Edition, and next level down is the Grand Touring. We now recently announced the Grand Touring Performance, which is a slightly more performance oriented okay. version of that. Touring and, and Pure. Pure is the, the, the lowest cost version. So yeah, the, all of those cars, or at least all the ones we've released so far, have, have two motors, one in the front, one in the rear. Yeah. And they really are a blend of, of range, of luxury and performance. Because I know when I first saw the car, the first car launched, I saw the big range number and then saw a large battery mm -hmm. and was like, okay, just put a big battery in. That's why you've got a big range. <laughs> I've, I've seen to learn a little bit more at actually things of like you guys have been pushing efficiency like yeah. super hard. So yes, it's got a big battery, but actually it's really efficient as well. Absolutely, yeah. Our CEO, CTO, has talked previously about kind of dumb range, just throwing a bigger battery yeah. at a car and achieving it that way. And you get into this, this vicious circle or cycle then of, well, the car gets heavier, handling is compromised, ride is potentially compromised, efficiency is compromised, even yeah. though you put more, more energy into the, into the pack by it being bigger. It's much smarter to really focus on efficiency, and then you get into this virtuous circle. So because we design our powertrain in-house, um, yeah. we were able to really kind of sweat every last detail of, of electrical efficiency, of mechanical efficiency. The, the, the pack is designed in-house as well. We, we buy in the cells from various right. suppliers, but then everything from, from the cell up is, is designed by us. All the modules, all the pack, all the clever electronics that go with it, all the software and controls of all that system. Aero is a huge thing for us as well. Mm -hmm. um, We've, again, really sweated the details on, our, on Aero. So we have one of the lowest CDAs, or the lowest CD, I should say, of, of any car in this segment, or, or perhaps even any production car, which really, really helps us achieve that range figure. So it's, the, there's no kind of single answer. It's, it's chasing efficiency throughout everywhere in, in, in the vehicle, which then, uh, by being more efficient, you can actually take cells out of the pack. You can yeah. make the car lighter. You get the benefits of better handling, better range that come with that. And yeah, it's, that, that's how we've achieved what yeah, we've achieved. Because I think it's, it's very easy for everyone to look at the sort of, let's say, base specs of all the sorts of different cars. You know, they say, you know, a stated range, and then you know that like, you're not gonna get that, whatever. But then presumably there's now gonna be, we'll start to see a differentiating in, let's say, stated in the UK, WLTP range. And then drive, for me, I've got a little Peugeot E208 that I use around town. I get pretty good range, in town, using regen, etc. But as soon as I get on a motorway, it drops off. Now, presumably, we'll see we see a difference in like motorway speed. You're going to get much closer. Do you get much closer to that like calculated range? You do, yeah. Um, so we've we've we knew that if we purely focused on um, performing, performing well in tests, yeah. it would irritate our real world customers. Yeah. So we made sure that our real world range matches or is very close to our tested range as well. 
uh, one of the, the publications that we, we lent out a car to recently, they do a 70 mile an hour test where they just, they find real roads. And yeah. this, was, this was around California in this it's particular like case. Like yeah. yeah, and they, um, uh, a, a few different places have done it, but they do a, a constant 70 miles an hour wherever they can, wherever traffic allows. And they got, uh, I think it was just over 500 miles versus our rated 520. Okay, so that's it's, it's, it's pretty good, and of course they've got the they've got the the aircon on. There's there's some variability with kind of stop and go traffic Still. and road surface and wind direction and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's very close to the rated range. That's that's very impressive because yeah, that's that's the one thing for me with an EV. I either I'm using it for short range stuff, so like, it doesn't matter. But occasionally I do a longer range, and you just get, most cars, you just get nowhere near, like nowhere near at a speed that you want to go, which I see is actually a benefit of, if you go for a bigger battery pack, if you build in much more range, then actually you don't, there's something luxurious about choosing the speed you want to go. Whereas generally most EVs, you get in and after you drive it for a couple of days, you realize that driving at 65 miles an hour gets yeah. you everywhere you don't have to stop so you drive at 65 miles an hour and that is not a luxurious experience you want to be yeah. able to drive maybe at 80 if you choose to and still have decent range to get get there and back so what are some of the things on this car that are different and i know the wheels i know the aero bits they they, they like pop off don't they they do yeah so the, this is the the sapphire version uh, that we're showing today so it's it's the same or very similar car underneath it uses yeah. the same the same body, um, same architecture. We've just really kind of gone to town on certain certain elements. So yeah, on the visual side, you mentioned the wheels. So it, it's an all new wheel design. It's wider, it's, it's lighter weight. As you mentioned, uh, we're showing today that there's a, a carbon aero cover, yeah. which really, again, back on the, top, on the topic of range, decreases drag. Yeah. So if a customer wants to drive this primarily commuting, primarily yeah. long distance driving, they can choose to, to keep those those fitted. If they want to pop them off for, let's say, more enthusiastic driving, yeah. they can easily do that as well, store them away. And then you've got excellent brake cooling. Uh, we've got carbon ceramic brakes, uh, which we've developed specifically for this vehicle here. So they, they combined with the error cover removed, it gives you fantastic performance. Yeah. Um, carbon ceramics, of course, run hot, so they, they need that ventilation. But yeah, really, really confidence, confidence inspiring brakes, great performance. Uh, we have a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire as well, developed specifically for us in yeah. partnership with Michelin. That's fantastic. It's, it manages to be both quite low rolling resistance, but then also give great performance as well yeah. by careful balancing of compounds and constructions across the, the, the width of the tire. So it, it varies from yeah, yeah, yeah. inside shoulder to outside shoulder. Really, really fantastic tire. Suspension-wise, uh, we've retuned almost everything. So springs, bars, bushings, dampers, uh, software control. Is it, all, is it an adaptive system? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's, it's a Bilstein uh, Damptronic system. It's, it's fantastic, yeah. So we've, we've revalved it, retuned it for this car versus the, the, the regular dual motor. And it's, I presume, I've not driven one, but even the regular car, the, the idea is it's meant to be luxurious, comfy on the road and then this has also got some performance but like yeah well, it's got the, a lot of performance but as in is that the the main sort of thing I, you I'd want say, it to be a luxury car but also can do stuff yeah on the on the dual motor car it kind of has a duality of character we have three drive modes smooth swift and sprint as the name suggests smooth mode it's prioritizing comfort it's for very smooth driving yeah. uh so generally your your suspension will be in its softest setting Steering efforts, brake efforts are quite light. Your, your pedal map uh, allows you to be very efficient very easily. It's, it's quite a relaxed pedal map. Mm. So that, that's great for commuting, for cruising long, long distances. And then you can, you can switch up into swift mode, which is kind of like a sport mode, or sprint, kind of like a sport plus. And they really kind of uh, wake the car up. So your suspension will firm up. It'll firm up both kind of um, all the time and it, it'll react more aggressively to inputs as well, driver inputs or road inputs. Uh, you get more steering weight and feedback, you get your, your brake pedal will weight up a bit, your, your booster calibration changes to give you more brake modulation ability. Yeah. Um, and then on the, on the powertrain side, when you switch into those modes, we allow more torque, more power, 
and we bias it more towards the rear as well. So the car really wakes up in those modes. So that's, that's the regular dual motor car. It really does manage to be both uh, a kind of comfortable cruising, long distance luxury sedan, but then also can be quite sporting as well when, when the time's right. This thing, yeah, just steps it up a notch as well. It's still a luxury car. It still has all the beautiful materials yeah. and lovely touch points inside. Still a lovely place to spend time and, and cover large distances, but this can really hustle. This can really, well, we'll, we'll show you tomorrow and Sunday at Laguna Seca, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty quick. So yeah, performance wise, zero to 60s, sub two seconds, zero it's to 100 pretty, miles an hour, sub four rapid. seconds. Yeah, that's what, that's quarter mile quick. is sub nine seconds uh, and it'll do over 200 miles an hour. Yeah, so and, and then you it's plenty. can dial it all, all back and cruise down the motorway and yeah. in a nice luxury. Yeah, um, and it's still have, get a good range. I have a, an E63 S estate. Nice. Like daily, one of the, the new shape ones. It's actually, They've seemed to have missed that luxury. It's luxurious and whatever, but the ride and handling is not luxurious. And it's yeah. really loud inside. You know, yeah. it's tire noise. It's not like double bass and stuff. And I don't understand why people make, regardless of any aspect of where on the performance line it is, that cars that fundamentally are GT, comp, like they look like they should be comfy, and then you drive them. <laughs> and like, like Audi used to be really bad at it. They're much better now. Like you get an RS product, and it's like you're just getting rattled <laughs> down the road. You know, yeah, but I'm in a big sedan estate thing. Like, yeah. So yeah, and I think it's, and especially with an electric powertrain, there's a level of refinement that you just can't get in definitely. a car that doesn't have an electric powertrain. Definitely, definitely. That level of calm. Yeah, I, I think we completely agree with you. It's, uh, yeah. It, you can have all that performance and you can have a comfortable place to spend time as well. Yeah. Then, then why not? Yeah. Yeah. Powertrain. Talk to me about it. So yeah, on the powertrain front, of course, the, the headline is that this is our three motor car. Previously, all the versions that we've released have had two motors. So this goes up to 11. This turns it up to, yeah, yeah, up there. So this is three motors, two in the rear, one in the front, which lets us do torque, vect torque vectoring with the powertrain, which and is... And are they just directly attached to each wheel at the rear? Yeah. Yeah, so one motor per wheel at the rear. And torque vectoring is so, so powerful. You can, you can really adjust the character of the car. So you can, you can turn it into, a, if you wanted, a kind of a, a luxury cruiser that's super, super stable at high speed. Or you can make it very agile and, and darty. Or you can choose anywhere in between and you can vary it in real time as you wish. Yeah. So hugely powerful. We, we ran a test recently where we ran this particular setup of car that, that you're looking yeah. at now. Um, on the track uh, up at a raceway in Northern California. And we ran it with torque vectoring turned off. Yeah. And I kind of baseline to that first of all, and it, it's a great chassis, feels really good. And then we turned torque vectoring on and did the same, and it just feels like it elevates the whole vehicle. So you get, you get sharper responses, yet the vehicle is more stable as well. You can set the car to a certain body slip angle in a, in a yeah. drift, and you can just hold it there through the corner. And, and we can dynamically choose whether to add or subtract your inertia to make the car more stable, less stable. Okay. Um, it's really, really powerful. So what sort of trick things do you do? Presumably there's the obvious one, which is like braking, but it's not braking, an inside wheel to sort yeah. of tighten up the turn, etc. that sort of stuff. Uh, presumably it develops significantly from just that. Yeah, I, I don't want to give away the secret <laughs> sauce too much, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we, we can, so we, we can decide to put 100% of the torque to a rear right wheel or a rear left wheel if we choose. We could put a negative torque on an inside yeah. wheel on a, in a corner if we choose. If we, if we wanted to, we could choose to spin that wheel backwards. We, we don't want to, but yeah. we could, the system's capable. So if you look at what's, ca what's possible with active differentials, typically on, on combustion engine vehicles, yeah. that's good, but this takes it to a whole new level where you can actually do negative torque. Yeah. And then there's all kinds of trick ways that, that we decide to do that and how we control it with our in-house developed algorithms. That's been really fun because we, we kind of came in knowing it was going to be powerful to change yeah. the character of the car, but not, not quite knowing how we wanted to, yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah. So uh, through kind of trial and error and crazy ideas and testing things out over the last two years. That must be um, really interesting because definitely yeah. from a for performance EV point of view, when I first heard that you, we were going to start getting cars with a motor on each wheel, yeah. you're like, hang on a minute, this, is, this is changes the ball game completely in what you can do with the car. And even things like saying with like traction control, 
like you know the exact position of that wheel mm -hmm. the entire time to like not quite infinite resolution but like super super high yeah whereas like traditional traction control <laughs> they don't have that much and then they're using some brakes so yeah like, uh, yeah an ev powertrain as far as traction control is concerned is both a blessing and a curse to start with a curse uh you can have huge huge amounts of torque through a wheel or through an axle applied in such a short amount of time, which can then uh, cause the wheel to, or, or the axle to, to spin up to yeah. up to the moon quicker than traditional yeah. combustion engine focused traction control systems can cope with, because you don't have all that inertia of a, of a combustion engine. And a um, limit of gears. <laughs> exactly. So like, uh, if, you, if you hit a rev limiter in first or second or third on a combustion engine, oh, you might be doing I don't, 45 miles an yeah. hour, 70 or 95. In this, you, can spin, you could spin them up with a single gear up to well over 200 miles an hour when the car's doing five yes. miles an hour. So that's the curse side. Makes that, makes your right foot <laughs> yeah. a bit of a challenge. That's the curse. And, and we ran a lot of cars early on years ago with no traction control and it's, it's lively. It keeps yeah. you awake. But the, the blessing side is just as you said earlier, we, we know so much about what a wheel or, or an axle is doing. And we can, we can control it at, at a thousand hertz. We can control the torque yeah. and, and, and speed. And that is, that's just so, so good for, for very precise, very careful um, speed control, torque control, yeah. dynamics control. So yeah, blessing and a curse, but overall fantastic. And then I imagine the headache and fun then is the calibration of whatever, you know, traction control type systems that you're, you're running with that. Cause yeah, I'd, I'd describe it as fun. It's yeah, um, yeah we, we've got a very capable controls team. I think they have some of the best jobs in the world, uh, just figuring out this stuff from scratch. And it's um, a really cool time for that, isn't it? It's like new tech yeah. that didn't exist before, and these new capabilities, when I imagine if you were running with the old school systems, which are still you know, on cars now and whatever, the toys in your toy box are just <laughs> infinitely more interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's daunting when, when you kind of, because we're, we're not just rinsing and repeating, this is, this is doing new stuff yeah. that often hasn't been done before. As you said, it's an emerging field. We're learning new things every day. Uh, we know, we have to know where we want to get to. We don't know how we're going to get there. Yeah. And you just have to figure it out. And, and the, the important thing there is a team that's really capable and really bloody determined. And, and it, it's hard work, it's long hours. You'll hit a hundred different setbacks, but we just have to keep plowing through and figure it out. And yeah, yeah we're, we're really, really happy with where this has got to. And as I said, we've, we've kind of, demo the system with torque vectoring off, torque vectoring on, and it's it's fantastic. We we can really elevate the character of the do you car. Have rear, wheel, rear wheel steer? We don't. We don't know. Do you do a bit of like low speed, one wheel going back, one <laughs> going forwards. We've looked at it. Rotating um, type stuff. Yeah. If if you've ever driven a car with with low Ackerman and you get kind of crabbing and scrubbing yeah. behavior. Uh, imagine that twenty times worse. <laughs> That's what you'd get. So I think it's good for low friction services like dirt, gravel, yeah. mud, but uh, with this being primarily a road car, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a bit violent <laughs> if we do that. We've tried it though. Yeah, okay, of <laughs> course. Cool. Right, well, thanks very much for having a little chat and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the show. You too, thank you.